So a few days ago, I made a video about using the Apple Vision Pro for remote work and whether or not I think it's worth it. Short answer is yes, I think it's pretty great. But in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to set up the Apple Vision Pro with your Mac for virtual display and some settings I think can improve your experience. A couple quick housekeeping items, make sure that your Mac has the latest operating system installed, which is OS Sonoma. And second, make sure that your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are turned on in both your Mac and your Vision Pro. This will still work if you're somewhere without a Wi-Fi connection, like an airplane or a train, but they just both need to be turned on. Now there are two ways to connect your Mac. The first is if you have a laptop, you can look at your laptop and you can tap the connect icon. Now in my testing, I found that this doesn't always work. And if you don't have a laptop, the other way you can connect is if you look up to the little down arrow, click your fingers, look at the control center, open it up. And the third option on the bottom says Mac virtual display, and you should see your Mac listed and you should be able to connect. Now your Mac desktop will display as a window in the Apple Vision Pro and you can reposition it and also enlarge it just as you would any other window within the Apple Vision Pro. However, keep in mind that the aspect ratio will remain the same for your desktop view. Something else to keep in mind is that your desktop will display as only one window at this time. You will not be able to create multiple desktops and reposition them in your Apple Vision Pro view. So effectively, this mirrors your Mac as one single monitor. Now let's talk about the keyboard and mouse situation. As long as your keyboard and mouse works with your Mac, it will work with the Mac virtual display, but that does not mean that it will work with the Vision Pro apps outside of your virtual display. At this time, only Bluetooth keyboards and Apple trackpads will work with apps outside of your virtual display. Otherwise, if you're using apps, you'll have to use the virtual keyboard, which involves pecking with your fingers. I really don't like this, and it doesn't actually work with the Mac virtual display. My preferred method is just to use my laptop's keyboard and trackpad. The cursor does work really well if you're using apps outside of virtual display. If you look at an app, you should see the cursor appear as a little dot. What I also like is that the cursor can reposition windows for your apps and can also resize them. However, you will still need to use your hands to grab and resize your virtual desktop. So just keep that in mind. Now let's talk about display settings. If you're on a Silicon Mac, it will automatically display a 4K resolution. And if you are on an Intel Mac, it will display a 3K resolution. However, the scaling is a bit wonky. So we're gonna open up settings and we're going to go to displays. By default, you should see that the resolution is scaled to 1440p, but this does not mean that your max resolution that you're actually seeing in virtual display is at 1440. This just means it's scaled that way. There are a few other options as well. 2160, which makes everything really small, and 1080p, which is actually my preferred scaled resolution. Again, if it's set to 1920 by 1080p, this does not mean that your max virtual display is in 1080p. It's still in 4K, and I'll show you why in some testing. This just means that everything is scaled to a 1080p monitor, which actually, for me, makes it a lot easier to use. Now, to test this out, I have a 4K YouTube video that I will start playing through. Here's the 4K video. I'll go back and change it to 1080p mode and the video looks just as crisp and sharp, and I can confirm that it still is in fact in 4K resolution. 1080p mode is going to make everything a little bit bigger, the text is going to be easier to read in all of your text and menus, and if you open up a web browser like Safari, it will zoom in a bit and make everything easier to read as well. So let's talk about audio settings. Unfortunately, at this time, audio from your Mac will not be able to cast to the Vision Pro through Mac Virtual Display. It will still come out of your computer speakers or your headphones that are connected to your Mac. However, if you do have AirPods, they will be able to switch back and forth from your Mac Virtual Display to your Apple Vision Pro apps. However, I found in my testing, they don't always switch back in which case you will need to go up to your Bluetooth settings and select your AirPods to connect them back. Now, a few other closing comments. If you decide to close your laptop, your Mac virtual display 
will still be there until your Mac goes to sleep, in which case you will need to reconnect. And finally, the Apple Vision Pro works best in a well-lit environment. If I were to cover this up to simulate a dark room, I will see a tracking failed icon. So just keep that in mind if you're working in a dark environment. So I hope those work settings help you set up your Apple Vision Pro so that you can virtually display your Mac for remote work. I'm going to keep diving into display settings and using the Apple Vision Pro for working remote in future videos. So stay tuned. If there's anything that you're interested in learning about, let me know in the comments below and like and subscribe so that you can keep updated with Apple Vision Pro content.